1960 CIA Black Ops mission to kill Fidel Castro. We are in Cuba, as you may guess, and uh, we are running a rifle which officially doesn't exist in the setup, which officially doesn't exist. El Presidente Drill, or El Fidelo, I should say. Fidel Castro surrounded with his bodyguards and El Nino Fidelo. <laughs> it's uh, his bastard child. Everyone has to die. As I said, by the way, post in the comments, did Fidel Castro ever had the bastard kids? I'm interested to hear what you got to say about that. Okay. All right, everyone was eliminated in that shootout. No survivors. Who are you people? It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is we have a plan. <laughs> All right, and the plan is right now, Ola, we will go to the 365 and conquer. No, no, your limits. All right? Okay. All right, I got the one round left in that magazine. I got to adjust the settings for the 360 so that has to be one two more clicks and uh, wind is coming and going so this is something to pay attention to for sure all right Ola let me know let's go let me get a good position here because these targets are going to start shrinking and wind okay I on I'm on the 11 o'clock I think I see this in my scope don't lose the breast Lapua breast very good breast let me check that hit yeah that's 11 o'clock so elevation wise I'm happy with what I got, just gotta put a little bit more, slightly more on that wind. And <laughs> just when I said that, the wind is picking up, I can feel it on my face. Crazy. All right. One o'clock though. We are. We are, we are blade running here. It's a one o'clock, but uh, the wind, wind looks better now with correction. We are on the top of the gong. nice as i said we are blade running here <laughs> that's that's uh, that's uh, basically a nine o'clock holy cow so that uh, that wind is really shifting guys i'm not joking okay it's coming and going uh if it will be a steady wind that will be cool but it is not so three down and now the Range partial is blocked with uh, the shade too. Boom! Perfect nice. hit. Perfect hit. That is perfect hit. Oh, I cannot get any better than that. That was a good shot. <laughs> Look, 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 I just jinx it now. I know that. Shut up, Rob. All right. And the wind is slowing down here. But I, I still think some movement, I see some movement in the scope.
and it's a miss. That's fine. You know what? I will take those uh, four hits and I will show you later on the picture uh, with this scope. Unfortunately, the scope is great. You can see uh, the target when you're not looking at the target, that very small target, with through the reticle. Uh, because the reticle is so thick that it covers that uh, small target. So you don't know really where you are aiming at. Uh, and even I pushed to the right. I don't know where the miss was. I pushed to the right, but I still couldn't see the target. So I just assumed it was there. That's fine. Uh, it was it was a good performance on Know Your Limits, guys. I'm really happy with what, what I accomplished here. Moving forward, okay? Ula, 400 yards. The little one or...? Uh, the little one, yeah. Well, <laughs> of course the little one. <laughs> We'll try to we'll try to push it as hard as we can on that setup to see if uh, the CIA Black Ops was up to something or not. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. Let's go. Okay, I'll adjust my spotting scope. All right. I'll need a chamber four on the two red, four there in my book. We should be good. Just watch out for wind. Boom, on that close to the three o'clock, and that's perfectly fine. I push that uh, hold over to the edge of the target because I can feel that wind coming here and maybe it was a little bit too much but that's a great, great elevation wise, that's a great hit and it's a great holdover too, I'll, I'll take that hit uh, Ola, we will do the command bunker right now, okay? Let's go! So, bunker got rebuilded after the storms <laughs> recent storms we had here and you should see the nice netting, I put the netting back We'll see what's going to happen. All right. Nice shade too. We ready? Let's go. That's a hit on the target. Ten o'clock. Awesome. Let me move the spanning scope. Yep, beautiful hit. Right there, right there. Some wind deflection to the left, but this is absolutely acceptable. I will take that. Ola, we are going to go for the uh, 500 yards and Vintage Rifle Shooters Club target, okay? Exclusive target from the Vintage Rifle Shooters Club and the Steel Ops. Let me add two more clicks to the scope. And we'll try to knock out that little gong in the middle. Which I can basically not see because the gong is painted in white. Whose idea was that? Well, I'll let me know. Just one second. Yeah, yeah. It's tough to pick it up, right? Because it's blending a little bit. It's not that. It's Mirage. It's Mirage. Ooh. Maybe, uh, maybe yeah. go back a little bit on the zoom. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And the wind is picking up too. Well, this is going great, guys. <laughs> more wind, more mirage. You cannot make this up. Just one second. Yeah, yeah. And I see the turkey. We cannot shoot anyway. There is a turkey downrange. He's walking at the 450 yards. He's a suicidal turkey. He's covering 500 yards target. <laughs> okay, I'm not going, not going to shoot. Let, let the bastard pass. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up, guys. Okay, it's ready, but it looks really bad. Uh, it looks really bad. Uh, it will try. And there's no turkey, right? Turkey is past that tree now on the left. I oh, see. No, no. Oh, you didn't, you didn't catch the turkey? Oh, you gotta trust me, there was a turkey on the range. All right, let's see what we can do on that 
It's all good. That's a hit. Let me see where I got him. And oh, that should be a nice hit close to that ring. Almost at the bottom. Maybe, maybe it's even. I think that's a hit on the on the cutout in the middle. I think that was a fantastic shot. Yay! <laughs> All right, Ula, five fifty. Okay. Okay. Wow, we had a turkey on the ranch. Then the crazy wind, then the mirage. I just hope so this footage is looking decently, guys, so you can see it. Mirage uh, is really bad. I don't know why. The yeah, mirage is bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's go. All right. The 550. Yep. And for a 550. Okay. Nice. That was with the wind adjustment. I was outside. Very nice. I'll take that hit. That's a good hit, Ula. Yep. Uh, and uh, that was with the adjustments for adjustment for the wind. Uh, you should be seeing the wind in the camera. Uh, it's really no joke, guys. Uh, all right, 600. I gotta add three more. We'll go for the Vintage Rifle Shooters Club oh. target, okay? Yeah. The one... Uh, which is on the right side. The little one. The little one. That one doesn't have a cutout. That's a cheaper version on budget. VRSC on budget. And I got my clicks on the turret. Yep, just checking. Yep. Okay, we can go. And we just gotta watch out again for the wind. And make sure. Yeah, there is there is a wind. Oh shoot, that target blends because it's kind of white. Oh, where is the edge? Oh shit, okay. Oh man. You won't believe this, that white target blends with that light of bouncing off the grass. Crazy. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about when you're looking through the camera. Okay. Oh, miss on the right side. I seen the splash, I put too much for that wind. Let me see. Well, are we good on it, right? waiting all right and that wind is changing direction now I'll, I'll put it in the middle boom and look at that crazy guys crazy that wind changed direction and I noticed this because I'm looking at the mirage in even in this scope is picking up Cole Morgan 4X picking up the really mirage nicely you can see what's going on and I adjusted and look at that oh uh, absolutely freaking amazing but this just shows you how this wind on this field bounces back changes directions and it, it this was this one went in totally opposite way crazy we got it all right 650 Ula. Two more clicks. How is the mirage situation in the camera looking like? Uh, you will see pretty soon. M manageable. <laughs> All right. I got around in the chamber. I got the 15 clicks on the turret. Ula is ready. And there is a shade scooping. Oh, you are on the little one or the big one? On both. On both. I think I'll go for the big one, Ula, okay? Okay, let's go. Full size target. That's a hit. That's a hit on the target. And beautiful hit. We just drifted a little bit. I noticed that we got some 
I started feeling the wind on the right cheek and I push it a little bit to the right and that's that's a freaking good hit. I will take that. Ola, 700, okay? Okay. We'll go for the 700 full-size hip six size target, okay? Okay. I have to add two more clicks to the turret. Let me know. I'm ready. Oh, she's ready. Holy cow. Alright. So let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that's just for a win. Nice. Petr Mask. You're kidding me, I couldn't hear that. Almost. The, the... Right. Oh yeah, beautiful. This is absolutely textbook hit and performance. And with that being said, with that crazy, crazy changing conditions on the fly, we are going back to the studio to discuss this specific rifle and the results on the range. Unless, Ula, are you still on that target? Yes, I was. Oh, all right, can I put two more shots to it? You two, have to. Two more shots. Two more shots. Let's Don't see. Up. Let's see. Ooh. See, for that wind, though. No, nine. All right, that's it. That's it. But see, elevation-wise, we are all line guys. That shift to the to the left is just from wind. So from the wind hold of it, but elevation wise, we are holding beautifully. This rifle is very, very consistent. One more shot. Nice. And there you go. And screws. That was beautiful hit too. And we got the three nice hits on the plate and I can keep pounding that target, Mercy Leslie. <laughs> so, with that being said, this is it. You can see you can make the consistent hits to that distance without uh, any sweat. You just gotta watch out for the wind. Now, going back to the studio. So, let's talk first about what happened at the range. I think the only misses we had were at Know Your Limits, that mini tiny uh, gong at uh, 365 yards, and I basically screw up the wind call, and that's why that route went where it went. Now, this also brings the case that the reticle inside this Cole Morgan for power scope is an outstanding combat reticle, but it is not really good as a target reticle. What I mean by this, it is great to pick up the targets quickly through the scope because you have rather thick, steady, steady lines inside the reticle. So you can navigate with the scope really quickly through the field, pick up the targets, but it is not really good to shoot at the tiny small targets. That four power scope does not offer a lot of magnification when the target size is really, really small. I'm not making any excuses for myself. I should knock out that Know Your Limits last go. I didn't. But if you will look at the picture through the scope, you will see you basically don't see the target. Uh, and as the, the old saying goes, it's hard to kill something if you cannot really see it. Now, going back to the regular size targets uh, at the extended ranges, again, that reticle, how thick those lines are inside the scope, that poses some trouble. But then again, I think that the overall, all the positives about this scope are outweighing the negatives. Now, another uh, miss I had, it was, uh, if I remember this correctly, at 600 yards, and again, that I screw up the wind call. Interesting fact with that target was, because the target was painted white, and I know you cannot really see on the camera because we got the polarized uh, filter on it, 
but with when you look through the scope and that white target was blending almost perfectly with that white light glaring of the, the grass so that's something what you have to watch out for again small rather small target that those vintage rifle shooters club targets are like simulating the person in the squad really tiny that's why i like them so much uh, but it is what it is other than this i would say the performance of this rifle was outstanding and this takes me to something what i do not understand how the u.s military could screw up so badly the 1903 a4 sniper rifle program and what i mean by this as you guys know we were running on those basically a soda straw like <laughs> scopes m73 uh, b1 scope very little field of view very small diameter of objective not really good at gathering the light that's the world war ii setup basically right and what was happening with that rifle in the 1903 a4 program i think the u.s military really had an outstanding rifle this is a very good shooting rifle on an outstanding action running very good caliber 306 to this day it is a very decent cartridge right so how come we got so screw up with the setup for the optics that's beyond my comprehension now going to this setup where this scope came from was actually from the garand mc1 not m1c mc1 in 1952 the Marine Corps decided that it is time to look into the upgrades to the scopes on the, uh, the M1C rifles, right? And how they can upgrade it. So the Cole Morgan provided the four power scope and all they had to do is change the rings on the top of the mount and boom, they fitted those scopes to the M1C, which become MC1. And that's, we're talking about the 1952, basically, right? The Marine Corps retained those scopes. Even in 1959, there is a manual which talks about how to convert those rifles to include the, uh, let's call them MC <laughs> scopes, Cole Morgan 4 power uh, scopes. Past 59, we are coming into the early 60s. Rifle has been deemed obsolete and the whole M1C, MC1 program basically ceased to exist. Now, going back to the Springfield 1903 A4, it, it is, as you can see, it is possible to fit that scope to the rifle. Why that never officially happened? I have no idea. That's what I said. This is very unofficial setup uh, and it's like a black ops, right? But it, it works, it, it fits perfectly and they, were, they had the rings which could incorporate those scopes. The scope tube diameter is slightly larger than one inch, uh, but there were, you could enlarge those rings by reaming them through and making them accept that scope without any issues and going back to the 1903 a4 they are extremely easy rifle to accurize and they maintain the accuracy so now you may say okay the m1c or mc1 was scrapped from the books deemed obsolete uh, and we coming into the vietnam war right and both branches the marine corps and the u.s army are scrambling now to find the sniper rifle and they are ending up with many off-the-shelf hunting rifle solutions purchases this is before the m40 program was actually created or, or xm21 program was uh, created both branches were scrambling and they pull out the Springfield 1903 A4 in early stages of the Vietnam War and pressed them to service. But those were equipped then with M84 scope, which is basically that's the scope, the M84 scope. And this is not really good scope again. This is only 2.2 magnification. So 
it's beyond me how come the Cole Morgan was ignored and these scopes never made it to the official service which by if you will take even this setup and press it against the M40 with the Redfield 3 to 9 power scope but as we remember from the previous video on the M40 you could not adjust anything on the elevation or the windage I mean you could but they were not easily accessible adjustments like you have two reds here so all you could do with the M40 was stick to the hole bonus where here you can you have very repeatable as you could see I, I was dialing for the each stage very repeatable clicks on those two reds and I tested those two reds I was going constantly at the range from 700 to 300 to 500 to 700 and go back and dialing and checking and yes you were making repeatable hits so it is beyond me I cannot understand how that happened and I'm not saying in the 60s you know to put the Col Morgan but probably uh, you could work on a similar type of the scope you Redfield was already having the scopes with the turrets and why those was never selected and pressed into the service I don't know but forget the new scopes but like why you didn't even utilize what you had in the inventory why the US military didn't utilize what they had because after scrapping the M1, MC1 program those scopes were already in the inventory right I think it was like less than 500 scopes or something uh, I don't remember exact numbers but they were still in the inventory and you could make those rifles especially because you are digging out the 1903 A4 and pressing this back to the service granted it was probably not the the combat but uh, the training and things like this but even then that would be a better solution so uh, it's hard to understand for me some decisions which were made or, or which happened if someone has any ideas why the US military followed that path and uh, basically if someone could answer to that question why the US military literally sabotaged the 1903A4 sniper rifle uh, I think this was the best sniper rifle not sniper weapon system but the sniper rifle of the World War II it was still good enough for the Korean War and even for the Vietnam War this rifle could deliver I understand the Vietnam War was switched to the 308 and you know this was the new and sexy cartridge but there was nothing wrong with 3006 and 3006 could compete with 308 uh, very very uh, easily all right this is it some questions for you guys if someone has some answers please join the discussion below the video uh, I think this is the topic which we kind of have to come back and talk about the decisions or the thought process which the US military went for the World War II and after World War II with in regards to the sniper rifles and uh, what happened and why that happened all right that's it I'm shutting up big thanks as always to the patreons you guys rock and stay tuned for more videos see you bye